Most people have heard of Northern Light Hunters, but how many of us know the origins of these spectacular phenomena? To study them, scientists are able to recreate space conditions in their laboratory. At the French Observatory of Earth Sciences and Astronomy in Grenoble, John Lillenston has been studying polar auroras for years. He observes and recreates them using his aurora simulator, which he dubbed Planetarella. This dome is an aurora borealis simulator. These auroras occur above an altitude of 80 kilometers in the void of space. So I have a vacuum pump which constantly extracts the air inside the device. I also have spheres which contain magnets. It's as if this was the Earth with a magnet inside it or the Sun where the magnetization is slightly different. By connecting the spheres to the positive and negative poles of a generator, one of the spheres becomes a star like the Sun, for example. It sends electricity into interplanetary space, which is what we call solar wind. Millions of electrons leave the star and move around the planet towards the magnetic north and south poles. Collisions occur in contact with the nitrogen and oxygen of our atmosphere. When the molecules recover their equilibrium position, the energy resulting from the collision comes out as light. This is known as northern lights, or polar auroras. But could these phenomena, whose formation process is now well described on Earth, be found elsewhere in space? In 2005, the Mars Express European satellite detected specific areas with high UV radiation on the red planet thanks to a spectrometer especially designed to describe the Martian atmosphere. The ultraviolet spectrometer has several functions. One of them is to observe light everywhere, in particular on the night side. That's where we discovered unexpected emissions on regions of Mars known for their magnetic fields. And that's how we thought that these could be aurora. While these auroras detected in the ultraviolet have been confirmed by scientists, could these exist in the visible spectrum and be observed from Earth? To find out, John Lillenston and his team used the planet Torella to verify this hypothesis by reproducing the atmospheric conditions of Mars. To do so, the scientists use carbonated ice at negative 78 degrees Celsius, which releases carbon dioxide as it warms up. This is the main component of the atmosphere of Mars. Collected in a balloon, the CO2 is transferred into the planet Torella by opening a valve. The researchers then dive into a new universe. Using this device, John Lillenston shows the physical possibility of blue and purple auroras that could be visible to the naked eye and possibly from Earth. This type of phenomenon has not yet been observed on the red planet. John Lillenston would now like to prove it with direct observations, which is quite a challenge. The astronomer therefore develops an original observation protocol in collaboration with the world's best astrophotographers. The experts take pictures of space that are not only aesthetic, like with this nebula, but that also aim to document and make scientific discoveries. A network of 10 photographers spread out across the globe increases the chances of observing the phenomenon without cloud cover. Emmanuel Baudouin is one of them. He pointed his telescope from Paris. Mars is a planet that we can't photograph very often, since it only approaches the Earth once every two years. That's when we have the largest apparent diameter, and we can see many things on its surface and in its atmosphere. Equipped with specific filters to capture the blue light of auroras, Emmanuel Baudouin adjusts his telescope by focusing on the Moon first. Here we monitor the parameters, evolution, turbulence, and exposure. Later in the night, Christophe Pellier and Emmanuel Baudouin take pictures of the red planet under excellent conditions. While analyzing their pictures, the astrophotographers notice a detached layer of light on the dark side of Mars. 
When we first saw this huge arc of light in the atmosphere of Mars, which followed the planet's curve, we really wanted to believe it was an aurora at first. However, something else on the images intrigued Emmanuel Baudouin and the other photographers. Under this layer, they spotted a shadow on the ground of the planet, which excluded the possibility of a Martian aurora. We followed these structures detached from Mars in its high atmosphere and observed that they dissipated as they reached the light side, but before they dissipated, they created a shadow. They became opaque. Yet, as it happens, an aurora doesn't become opaque. It sheds light. If this isn't an aurora, could it be huge clouds? To find out, the scientists use a technique that determines the color of clouds based on their composition. The spectral analysis of the images suggests that this may well be a CO2 ice cloud or a water ice cloud. Although they thought they'd found auroras, the team's work reveals the existence of a huge stretch of cloud that had never been described at an altitude of 92 kilometers. Discovering a phenomenon when looking for another is what is known as the serendipity of science. But then, what about the blue and purple Martian polar auroras that have not yet been observed from Earth? The next Mars opposition will take place in December this year. So we will focus on this small planet again and monitor its atmosphere. The quest for Martian auroras may soon bear fruit. The success of Earth-based observations will depend on both the intensity of solar wind and on the watchful eye of the world's astrophotographers, all of whom are now awaiting the alignment of planets conducive to capturing the first Martian aurora.